Highway 99 there. You can see Tim Hortons. Everybody knows where Tim Hortons is. Um, if an accident occurs in that location, that building is likely destroyed. And so is uh, the building where our first responders are, the police station, on the other side of the Howard Highway. If you're shopping at Walmart, when that happens, the pressure waves will shatter glass. If you live or work anywhere along this pipeline, you are at risk. Next slide, please. Another key concern is the radiative effects, which is radiation from fire. Um, and this map shows the radiative effects within 60 seconds of a worst case scenario accident near Raven's Plateau, uh, which is marked by the X. So if an accident happens, people within 330 meters are likely dead, that's the dark red line. People within 460 meters will suffer 70 second degree burns, that's the second orange circle. And people within 750 meters will experience pain. And an accident like this could occur anywhere along the pipeline. There is an existing 10-inch high pipeline that already, high, sorry, high pressure pipeline that already goes behind Ravens Plateau and along Fitch Drive. Uh, but this pipeline is the only example of a high pressure pipeline through a densely populated area. This already isn't normal. It is not normal to have a high pressure pipeline going through the middle of a densely populated community where people live and work. And now Fortis BC wants to put a second pipeline, a 24-inch high-pressure pipeline, right next door to it. What the fuck? Number four, LNG needs massive subsidies to be economically viable. We have calculated that wood fiber LNG will receive subsidies and tax breaks equivalent to $50 million a year. So that breaks down to $500,000 per job per year um, and, and they still have their hand out for more. This is not a good investment of our taxpayer money. This is not how we should be spending our precious dollars. Number five, wood fiber LNG will lock in climate pollution for up to 40 years. LNG is a climate disaster. This one project in Squamish will produce 1.5 times the greenhouse gas pollution of the entire community of Squamish. That's not even including the upstream emissions from fugitive methane from fracking. That's not including the downstream emissions from shipping or regasification or when the gas is burned by the final user. We cannot keep building new fossil fuel infrastructure when we are already experiencing the devastating impacts of climate change. So a little bit about My Sea to Sky and who we are. Uh, so we are a people-powered environmental organization that was founded in 2014 to defend, protect, and restore House Sound. We have successfully defended House Sound for eight years now. We have brought communities from around House Sound together. Our movement is intergenerational and it amplifies and supports indigenous voices. Wood Fiber LNG planned to begin construction in 2015, but in 2022, there are still no shovels in the ground. This is people power in action. Working closely with allies from Squamish Nation, we have held demonstration after demonstration to say no to Wood Fiber LNG. And over the last eight years, we've come together with a vision for the future we want. We want to protect our cats and house sound for future generations. We envision a future in which our cats and house sounds thriving ecosystems support regenerative communities. And we want climate action now. So what is the current status of wood fiber LNG? It's, this is a really interesting time because this project was effectively stalled. We had successfully stopped this project from moving forward for at least a few years. Um, but what is happening now, uh, when Russia attacked Ukraine, everything changed overnight. And the fossil fuel industry is now exploiting the European gas crisis to expand LNG exports like wood fiber LNG. 
And so just within the last month or so, Enbridge has bought a 30% stake in the project for $1.5 billion. That's really bad news for us because Wood Fiber LNG, they didn't have the investment money that they needed to begin construction, and now they do. The good news is that the cost to build Wood Fiber LNG has tripled since it was first proposed in 2014. So in 2014, uh, the cost of the pipeline and wood fiber LNG itself was $2.1 billion. Now, in 2022, uh, the cost of those two projects is $6.5 billion. So it has tripled 